Hey guys, I'm gonna show you a secret ingredient to smoking the juiciest brisket you've ever could imagine. Hey guys, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. If you're new here, my name is Todd. Or if you're not new here, my name is Todd. Now folks, before we get started, can you take a minute to just hit that subscribe button? It's not gonna cost you a thing, not a single dime, no dinero, nothing guys. It's totally free. What it does is it helps the channel out with that YouTube algorithm that they call it. And also be sure to hit that thumbs up. Again, doesn't cost you a thing and it really helps us a lot with the algorithm. So a while back, Sassy came home with a 24 pound choice full packer brisket. This thing was huge. So we do have an auxiliary freezer. So we stash it away for a future cook and that future cook came along yesterday. Why do I say yesterday? Well. 24 pound brisket takes a little bit of time, if you know what I mean. Honestly, it's kind of hit and miss with me. Some are better than others. They're always good, but they're never the consistency that you get from a good barbecue restaurant like Mad Jack's Mountaintop Barbecue in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, or Desert Oak Barbecue in El Paso. So recently I've been researching a little bit more on how these restaurants get their juicy flavor. And I came across a video of another pit master that was swearing by a secret ingredient that you use it toward the end that really caught my attention. And no, it's not Uncle Steve's Shake Smoke Bomb, although this is pretty good stuff too. And yes, you can use it toward the end, but that's not what I'm talking about here. You're just gonna have to stick around and see. Okay, so what I did do is a few days before I wanted to cook it, I took it out of the freezer and put it in the fridge to let it start thawing out. Now allow about a day for every five pounds of brisket, so that's darn near a whole week of thawing out. But I didn't want to thaw it out completely because I wanted to trim it. So having it nice and cold is definitely an advantage. So I took it out and gave it a really decent trimming. I say decent, it's not perfect. I tried to get as much of the silver skin as I could and certainly enough of that fat and some of that older rancid meat around the edges and stuff. And I rounded off the flat because uh, it is going in the yoder. But this thing was still huge after trimming. I think I probably only got maybe three pounds, four pounds of fat and other kinds of meat off there. And I set them aside for a future project. I'll let you know what that project is here later on. Okay, so now it's time to season this bad boy up. And I like using a schmear of a yellow mustard and so do a lot of other folks out there. Uh, trust me guys, you're not gonna taste the mustard when you actually eat it. This does something to the meat, I'm not sure what, but it definitely adds some tang, some great flavor, and it helps uh, create a coat of a uh, schmear, so to speak, that lets this Uncle Steve's shake stick just a little bit better to that meat. Now this is Smoke Mom. And why is it called Smoke Mom? Well, it's got a little bit of extra smoked paprika in it. It's got a really nice smoky flavor. And since, uh, I love smoked meat. What better thing to add to your meat than something that's already got a little bit of smokiness to it. So. After all that was set up, went out and uncovered the Yoder. Uh, I have the loaded Wichita, picked it up a few years ago from the barbecue headquarters in Simi Valley, California. And I just happened to have some Texas post oak wood chunks. Now they're about fist size and smaller. They weren't full splits, uh, but that's what was available to me and that's what I was able to get. I also have some hickory lying around and actually I got a lot of hickory lying around and a little bit of leftover almond wood from that uh, cook I had last week. I'm basically gonna mix a little bit of hickory with that Texas post oak. I'm gonna lean heavier on the post oak at the beginning of the cook, because I know I'm gonna run out sooner than that, and it's not really enough to keep a, a fire in that loaded Wichita. I really need proper size splits for that. 
and that's where the hickory is going to come in. So to give you guys a little bit of a timeline, I started to do this right about three o'clock in the afternoon. Actually, I started to do it earlier than that, but I got the brisket onto the pit right about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, this was a, a Friday. Uh, I was off Friday for me. So my plan was to finish it off in the oven as soon as I got it wrapped. That's where my secret ingredient comes in, guys. So be sure to watch to the end. Trust me, this may be life-changing to you brisket lovers. And now it's Saturday morning. I haven't even had my first cup of coffee yet. And this brisket's ready to come out. Guys, it's the whole house smells like brisket right now. So I guess without further ado, let's unwrap that sucker. Okay, let's, uh, let's unwrap this thing here. Okay, now uh, I smoked this uh, fat side up just uh, you guys want to know? Oh, look at that. Nice. All right, so right here, you know, got a little bit of a bald spot. You know, that's okay. I'm going for flavor here. Uh, but this bark looks absolutely amazing nonetheless. It's, it's awesome looking bark. Get this off the paper. There we go. Now guys, uh, this paper here can be used uh, as fire starter, okay? Um, so, so guys, here's the flat basically because it's flat, tends to be the leaner, drier portion. And then right through here is the decal. I left it on here, some people cut it off. And this is the point. Basically the grain's running like this and like this. Brisket burnt ends usually come from the point. And uh, without further ado, I usually mess this up the first time around, but I'm gonna basically cut right between, right down the middle, 50%, and then show you guys. Nice. Now that went through nice and buttery, except for right over here. Maybe it was a little bit tougher right here. Sometimes there's a tendon that runs through there. All right, guys, let's... Uh, Let's look at that there. Oh yeah, look at that. Let me show you the point first. Look at that juice, guys. Oh, it's just, it's just running out of there. Look at that, guys. Wow. All right, nice little bit of a smoke ring here. Now, little trick here is uh, if you like smoke rings, put your uh, brisket in there when it's nice and cold, and that way it. Uh, you get a little bit more of a smoke ring. The fat is rendered really nicely. Again, the flat right here is, tends to be the most leanest, but see how you can kind of pull it apart? Looks pretty nice, right? Get over here. Let me cut this off for you. All right, look at that, guys. Okay, a little thicker than I wanted to, but um, still a good piece here. So, now this tends to be a test for a lot of people. And look at that. Now it's kind of falling apart. Wow, babe, but, that looks juicy. But that's okay. We, we like it when it falls apart. They say, uh, you know, it should hang on its own weight. It kind of does. It fell apart right there, but that's okay. And then when you pull it, oh, look at that. It is nice. Now that's that's point, guys. I mean, I'm sorry. That's flat, guys. I can't wait anymore. Mm. All right, guys. Now I'm not gonna cut this up, guys, just for a picture. I'm not gonna do that. Best way to preserve the moisture is to just leave it alone. I've seen even folks stack it like this in the barbecue joints, just like that. Kind of helps it from drying out. Okay, so I'm going to do a little swap here. Now the point. Look at that juice, guys. Look at that. Nice. Now, the point, a lot of people say, oh, you can just cut right on through. A lot of people, myself included, will turn it uh, 90 degrees. And they'll cut off this part right here. 
Okay, I like to think these are little bits of candy. Look at that, guys. And I'm going to cut right through the middle. Look at that. Nice. Okay, the fat cap's up here. Again, I trimmed that fat cap to be about a quarter inch thick, guys. That's what you get. Nice rendered down. But you still got that vein right in between that connects the flat and the point. Okay. Look at that. Oh, that's just goodness right there, guys. Okay, guys, so I'm going to cut it a little bit thicker. I'm using a serrated knife. Works well with me. Look at that. Oh, it's falling apart at the bottom. Okay, the bottom was the side there that was sitting in there in the smoker and that obviously that's the more leaner stuff right there and there's just wasn't was enough fat in there to render down like that so um, that probably make really good uh, pulled brisket uh, sandwiches and stuff like that look at that guys all right look at that bark again 100 percent uncle steve's shake smoke bomb and uh, mustard that's it guys all right guys that's that's pure beefy flavor right there mm. easy to chew easy to swallow most of all the connective tissues have been broken down um, the fat rendered beautifully and then my secret ingredient that I'm about to tell you added even more juice to it and uh, let me tell you about that secret ingredient, beef tallow, guys. So all the fat, the pounds of fat you guys trim off of these briskets and stuff like that, they can be rendered down to make beef tallow. Basically the beef version of lard, which is a pork product, but not nearly as taste tasty. Now this is a jar that we got off Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link down below for it, but basically it's uh, from renderings, beef tallow, and it, you know it's beef because it's got a little picture of a cow on it. And this stuff, as you can see, it comes solid, kind of like a paste, and then you uh, put it in a little carafe or something, nuke it, and you end up getting something that resembles melted clarified butter. Um, then you uh, just put some in one of these little uh, squeeze bottles, and you got yourself some beef tallow. So where did I use the beef tallow? Just as I was wrapping, I soaked the paper in it, I squirted some on top of the brisket itself, and then I wrapped it up. And when I stuck it in the oven, I increased the temperature to about 275, and that's where it stayed until it reached uh, 206. And then the oven shut off, and it rested down to about 140, and that's where we're here right now. So now I had it in the cooler for a few hours between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And when I took it out of the cooler, there was probably about a half inch of juice on the bottom of that cooler. But I basically put it back on a pan and I put it in the oven under warm until I filmed this video. 16 hours, just about under heat or rest with this brisket. Total resting time, probably five hours. To some people, ah, maybe that's too long to rest. But you know, I've heard stories where some of these barbecue joints are resting their stuff for 10 hours, 12 hours. So guys, it's not unheard of and you might want to try it sometime. Ooh, I want to give you another shot of that, uh, those little morsels I cut off the end there. <laughs> so my next video, I'm going to take the trimmings from this brisket and show you how I make tallow. I've never made tallow before, but we'll give it a shot. And I hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Folks, if you don't mind right now, hit the subscribe button, doesn't cost a thing. Totally free, no money out of your pocket, and it helps the channel out. And down in the comments, let me know what you think, how this brisket came out, and how you would do it any differently, if at all. Till then, take care guys. Bye Sassy. Bye honey. <laughs>